Good morning, First Christian Church. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. I'm so glad to have you join us today, wherever you may be. We are, we're glad to have you worshiping with us this morning. A couple of announcements. I want to I want to say to all of you that we continue to watch the positivity rate here in Kentucky and what's going on in our area. And that thing is starting to slowly creep back down. And so we're watching that week by week. I've met with uh, people here at the church and we're working on a, a reopening plan and coming back to worship. And so sometime probably near the end of February, early March, we, we plan to hope to be back in in-person worship. And so until then, I invite you to continue to watch us week after week as we come to you virtually uh, this morning. And I'm glad to have you, wherever you may be watching this morning, join us for our worship together. I want to encourage you as we gather this morning to yeah, talk with one another, chat with one another, lift up prayer requests with one another as we engage with one another in fellowship and as we come together as a family of Christ this morning. And while you're doing that, if you haven't done so already, find that description link and fill out that, and click on that link and fill out that connection card for us so that we can stay connected during this time. Well, the Lord has called us here today for, for hope and healing and transformation. And so as we, as we gather today and we sing our songs and we, we hear the scripture, as we come together as a family of Christ, let us open our hearts to hear his claim once again on our lives as we come now with our praise and our worship. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Thank you. 
enjoy the Super Bowl football game this year. Help us be mindful and out of the In 1990, the simple prayer was delivered to a small youth group at Spring Valley Presbyterian Church in Columbia, South Carolina. This gave birth to the Super Bowl of Caring. Hi, I'm Michelle Tuttle, the Christian Education Coordinator at First Christian Church. This Super Bowl season seems different from the ones in the previous years. With COVID-19 still impacting our communities, we are experiencing more food insecurity than we've ever seen before. Let's harness the enthusiasm and energy of the Super Bowl to draw attention to our neighbors who are suffering. This year, all the donations for the Super Bowl of Caring will be donated to the Community Kitchen in Paducah. Before the pandemic, the Community Kitchen was serving about 300 meals a day. Now, they serve over a thousand meals within two hours every day, Monday through Friday. And the most important factor in this ministry, it's all free. There is absolutely no cost for the meal, no matter who you are. When we provide for those who cannot provide for themselves, we are providing as if for Jesus. Good morning, First Christian Church. I just came from serving at the community kitchen this morning with Michelle and many other people from our church today. And I can tell you this, the spirit of compassion and love, the spirit of community and generosity was shown today. And we also appreciate you for donating to this important cause, this important ministry that we do in partnership with our larger community. If you would like to make a donation um, towards the Super Bowl of Caring and the Community Kitchen, it, you can write your check out to First Christian Church and in the memo line put Super Bowl of Caring and we will be giving those to Community Kitchen um, in, a, in the next couple of weeks. We thank you so much for giving and for sharing love with the, those in our community. Thank you for giving! Bibles this morning, I want you to turn with me to the book of Leviticus, Leviticus in the Old Testament to the 19th chapter, beginning in verse 1 and then verse 9. As we continue this morning looking at our series called Shining Through, as we're looking at those everyday life activities that you and I do day in and day out that we can turn into spiritual practices to help us in this time together to be more uplifted and to be more lighthearted uh, during this time. And so Leviticus Chapter 19, beginning in verse 1. Hear now the word of God. The Lord spoke to Moses, saying, Speak to all the congregation of the people of Israel and say to them, You shall be holy, for I, the Lord your God, am holy. And when you reap the harvest of your land, you shall not reap to the very edges of your field or, or gather the gleanings of your harvest. You shall not strip your vineyard bare or gather the fallen grapes of your vineyard, but you shall leave them for the poor and the alien. I am the Lord, your God. And this is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Well, listen, as we are in this series about looking at everyday things that we can do to turn into spiritual practices, I had an opportunity this past week to sit down with two amazing women to talk about a new initiative here at FCC, a Green Chalice initiative, a Green Chalice team. And so I want to bring you that interview now as we, we, we sat down this past week to talk about ways in which we as a church, ways in which we as individuals can go about creating a, a better sustainability, not only in our homes, but our church and our world. Well, I'm pleased to have with me today two extraordinary 
ladies who are both passionate about uh, environmental care and creation care, and they are here today to discuss with me uh, a new, well, not a new program, but a relatively reformation of the Green Childs team here at FCC. And so I guess my first question, before we get into the program and what it's all about, would be this, and this is for both of you. Can you tell us what got you interested or triggered your own personal concern about caring for creation and where, where does your passion for creation care come from? Okay. Well, it started when I was a little girl because every day I, or every Sunday I went to Sunday school and we learned about, you know, taking care of God's earth and when I hear that question, I think of Psalm 100. You know, we are the sheep of his pasture. Mm. And the pasture is not only the people, but it's everything on this pasture. And then I go to 1989. I'm telling on my age now. <laughs> but it's that was the beginning of Earth Day. Mm. And yes. like my, our, my kids, you know, were school and as well as a little baby and um we did things you know the importance of what earth day what it meant and then you just heard more and more and then hearing and i would love to read the newspaper and the magazine so i hear more there well thank you how about you leah where'd your passion come from um i would say that my passion was definitely from both of my parents in different ways um, my mom was a chemistry teacher for 30 years, um, and my dad was a stay-at-home dad, and so he had the garden and came, did all the canning, and as my mom, uh, when she retired, she started working closer with the United Methodist Church um, and talking about environmental and sustainability issues. Um, she would she would do different um, conferences and she would go to different churches and speak on environmental issues and then she even um, worked with a team of people that would speak to government leaders um, on things that they could do um, to to help our environment so I guess from both of them they kind of were my inspiration that's that's great, that's mm -hmm. great. well listen I know a little bit, Brenda, about the Green Childs movement, and I know that it was kind of a grassroots movement here in Kentucky that began, I think, in 2007 uh, with Carol Devine and, and some other folks, Greg Alexander. Um, but can you tell us a little bit more about what the Green Childs is and what the movement is, is all about? I'm going to pass that on over to Leah. Oh, okay. Well, Leah, can you tell But us? I'll add more to it. Okay. Yeah. Excellent. Um, well, when we were doing our work on what was the Green Chalice, um, a lot of it is in response to our faith and responding to our calling to be, um, to tend for God's creation um, and to take care of and protect creation. But also, um, we seek to be leaders, um, not only in the church, but in our community. Um, leaders that that can show others and teach others how they can um, care for creation and, and also recognize how our actions are interconnected with our local community and our, our global communities. Excellent. You want to add anything, Brenda? Well, with the Green Childs, I think this is probably going to be with your next question. There are four different Categories. Yes, yes. Talk about that more. Yes. Well, with these categories, there are one item under each category that is a mandatory. Like grounds, you cannot, uh, grounds is one category, building is one category, worship, and hey, you're uh, doing a part of it right now, and then also the education or outreach. All of them have. Um, a special mandatory thing. I've written this down, like in building, 
it's mandatory to have an energy audit and then you would go from there grounds you use no chemicals on landscape you find other ways to do it and worship you replace all toxic cleaners with safe cleaners and the education outreach you create post environmental program for the children and youth that is just the beginning because each category you um, do 10 credits or more yeah i hear that and it, it almost sounds a little overwhelming I mean, there's a lot to unpack here with the green shadow so i guess my next question would be is where do you see or where does the team see it as a good starting point for us here at SVP? okay well i'll say a little bit and then i'll let Leah sure tell yeah you. absolutely okay we've already started we have a green chalice committee now we've already met once and we're meeting again in february and um we've been asked each one of the committee members are going to go around the building outside and uh, write down what they would like to see and how to what would they like on this plan okay you could call it a needs improvement plan or a consolidation plan you know school yeah. stuff but this is the green chalice plan and uh then we'll put it down on a chart under each category of different things what people would like to see uh, what different items to do and then we'll go from there okay which makes sense but then after making this chart out we would take it to the administration um, committee to get it okay and everything we have to add anything well we were just talking right before this that each one of those categories really aligns with who we say we are as a church um, and our, our mission is to witness God's love through family faith and service and we want to continue that through the implementation of these four areas um, how we how we serve our community through our green chalice program and that's a part of that outreach and justice um, part of it but also what are we doing here on, uh, to, to be a good example of, of creation care by partnering with our buildings and grounds and, um, and making certain sustainability choices um, as a congregation. And, and the education piece, I think, is a huge part of it too. To, as we grow in our faith and as we learn more about God's creation, um, then we can start to see how our actions affect um, our community. So, great, great. For anyone to, you know, want more information, it would be good to get on the computer and look greenchalice.org, and you would uh, look under certification, and it gives you all kinds of ideas. Certainly, we won't be doing all of them, but they give you an idea of what we could do. So if anyone's interested in more, greenchalice.com. Dot org. Dot org. Excuse me. Dot That's org. all right. Greenchalice.org. Okay. Um, I know that uh, recycling, let's talk about recycling first. That, that's one of the key goals of, of the Green Chalice. That's one of their hopes is, is to get every church uh, recycling or have a recycling plan. Do we still have a recycling plan here at SVP? We sure do. <laughs> talk, talk more about that, Brenda. Talk more about that. Well, anybody who would like to bring their paper or their cans, they can bring them downstairs where the Coke machine is, and somebody will be taking them to one of the recycling uh, buildings in the county. We we go to Masons. Yeah. Is it Masons or Masons? I think it's Masons. I can't believe I. It's Masons and everything. It's Masons. It's Masons. But you can also go to, there's another recycling place. It, like if you want to go on your own, uh, you know, you're a member, go to Garrett's as well. And you can take scrap uh, metal. You can go to um, call the Dream Green and they will come to your house and uh, pick up your recycling. And, or also, um, if you live within the city, 
you could uh, go under city of Paducah and you could get your own container and recycle at your home. Excellent. Leah, can you speak to uh, how can we be better stewards of our environment by having a good recycling plant? Can you speak to that at all? Um, actually, uh, I'm going to even back it up further than that. Um, I think the biggest thing that this whole, that recycling has opened my eyes to is that it's helped me make better purchasing choices. When I go to the grocery store, I'm looking at the things that I'm buying and I'm thinking, is, is that recyclable? Is that container recyclable? And I find that same thing in a different container that I can recycle. Or, or can I make that at my home? Is there a way I can make that at home so that I'm not using that product that I know in the end is going to go in the trash can? So I think it's it's twofold, and, and we, we have to have a really solid recycling program, but I think if we also look at it from the other end of it, what am I buying and what am I consuming so that it's not ending up in the landfills? I think that's the other the other piece of that. And well, you know, like we just at this moment recycle the paper and aluminum cans here because it's hard to find a place for glass at this moment. Mm -hmm. But there are so many other things that individuals can recycle. Well, if this isn't recycling, but it's reusing, like we have our annual yard sale. Mm -hmm. And see, that is reusing. And then we do not just throw it in the trash, what's left over. We give it to the River City Mission so they can uh, have their yard sale. It goes on and on. And, um, there are a lot of other things that we could recycle. You don't want us to keep on talking, but we will uh, start having eco tips in our new in the newsletter Fantastic. weekly glass, and uh, give them ideas where they could recycle glasses, where they could recycle plastic bags. Hopefully, not used too many anyway, and uh, recycle um, light bulbs. We'll give them those ideas on. By communication. That's fantastic. And I really liked what you said about it's not just about recycling, that we can't put, it, while recycling is a huge piece of it, we can't put everything into that one basket. We also have to be thinking about how do we reduce, how do we reduce our consumption and then reuse, you know, through our, um, through our what did you call it? The, uh, yard sale. the yard sale. Thank you. The trash and treasure. Right. So how do we reuse products through the yard sale? How do we donate our used products so that other other people can can use them? Um, yeah. So I, I think it's it's bigger than just the recycling. Oh, which is that's huge. Because yeah. that's only worth one point. Yeah. Okay. That's, <laughs> well, listen. You both know that I'm a big Bible nerd, I guess, and I like I, I like scripture. There's this one scripture I was fascinated with this week that got me thinking about what we were going to talk about today. It's in Leviticus, of all places, Leviticus chapter 19, where it talks about where the people, when they had land and they would farm, how they would always, when they went to farm the land, they would always leave behind some for those who didn't have enough food to come and glean the field. And, of course, there's a famous story in Ruth where Ruth is with Naomi, and Ruth goes to start gleaning the fields, and it's Boaz's field, and that's where she meets Boaz, and that's the rest of the story. But it got me thinking about, if you look at the numbers, and of course, these are all pre-COVID numbers from 2019, but the food insecurity rate here in McCracken County is 14.4%. Mm -hmm. The national average is 12.5%. So McCracken County and Kentucky as a whole, we're above the national average on food insecurity rate. Uh, the research says that it's even higher among children. Of course, when COVID hit, Leah, you know this, the number of the people that we saw uh, at the community kitchen just skyrocketed. It, it, people, uh, 
five times. Mm-hmm. And the question, well, that I hear is, you know, well, what can we do? Is there more that we can do? I mean, I know we're serving at the kitchen. We have a group going down serving at the kitchen. We're working with PCM. And, and I know the Green Chalice um, team hopes, and you and I have talked about this a little bit, hopes of maybe one day starting a community garden. Very soon. And, um, and so can you speak more about the hopes and dreams of the community garden and what that might look like? You know I can. I, I would love to be <laughs> there, so. Sorry. Oh, uh, well, about two years ago at the Caring and Nurturing, we got it okayed and uh, we talked about it and we made out a plan. You would not have to start real big. You would start with maybe two raised beds and you would not have to do any tilling or anything. You just put cardboard, you put the raised beds, you put the mulch around it, the dirt, and uh, then you had the seeds. Someone already has some seeds. And um, Hugo was also uh, giving us some seeds. And using, you know, we would have to figure out what we would want to do at first, because you have to build. You can't just have a big garden all at once. You have to build. And then with that plentiful, those plentiful cucumbers, you can not only can pickles and give them away, you can also put them in that box outside for the food pantry. You can send a PCM. And like, I had two cucumber plants last year and I had over a hundred cucumbers. Wow, my goodness. So I didn't keep all mine, you know, but yeah. it's really easy and uh, organic. It's all organic, no pesticides. Lisa, do you want to add anything to that about community garden hopes and dreams? Well, I, I guess I, I think very spiritually about, you know, that we we got uh, some tomatoes from a local garden here um, in the fall, and we got these delicious tomatoes. Oh my gosh, they were so good! And in this one tomato. I saved the seeds and already I have 20 plants. That's amazing. Isn't that amazing? From one tomato, we get 20 plants. And you know, we talk about food insecurity and there's not enough people that are being fed, but yet God has given us all the tools that we need to feed so many people not not just to feed ourselves but like you said to share from one tomato can come 20. and well, you just gave me an idea you know like if we had a farmer's market one day down uh, and anybody could just come and we could have ways in teaching them how to plant their seed so sure, they could yeah. uh, have a container if we had containers to give out Oh, hey, talking about recycling. Yeah. You know, and teaching them how to have their own tomato plant. Mm-hmm. And actually, that's a it's a new movement that's going around um, suburban gardens. And people in more suburban areas are planting their own gardens. Mm-hmm. And it's amazing. You, you do have enough food for yourself and to share. And if we could start that as a community and get more people in our community to do the same, we would have we would have enough to share. Sure. Yeah. So well I know that the Green Chalice and the Green Chalice team is, is all about helping us to um, to create ways to to be a better church, make better use of our building and our grounds and our uh, but as I'm thinking about this, maybe maybe there's something more we can do of taking better care of our home. So uh, are, are there suggestions, things you would recommend, uh, things that we can do at home to begin the process of uh, taking care of not only our home, but our planet? I, I would say there's a lot of things I could say, actually, <laughs> but I, I don't want to go into all of it too soon. Sure. It yeah. might overwhelm everybody. But I would say the first thing is, and I've already mentioned it, 
just being aware of what we're purchasing. Um, I think when we're when we go through the shopping aisles and we start to look at the things that we're consuming differently, I think that's a spiritual practice too. Mm -hmm. At least it has been for me because I, I'm recognizing the things that I don't need in my life. And I'm also making space for things that I do need. Now, I, I don't need all the new fancy stuff. I don't need, you know, that really cute wall art that would just look really good in the den. You know, I don't, I don't need those things, right? But in, in not consuming, I'm recognizing more space in my home that I can breathe, more, more time that I'm spending on my emotional health, on time with God. And it, it's helped me to make space in my heart for the things that really do matter. So that that would be that would be step number one, I would say. Brenda, you want to add anything to that? Well, with the green chalice, it's like I said, it's not just for the grass, not just for the air, but it's also for you. Mm -hmm. For each, what are you eating? What are you putting on your skin? What chemicals are in that lotion? Mm -hmm. So I paid a lot more attention the past year mm -hmm. of that. And um, like you said, you make your own soap mm -hmm. and wow that's you know and it does and it's all organic mm -hmm. but uh there's a, lo a lot of things i love my garden like you know this past year you know you had to we were supposed to stay home so we were staying home the garden was amazing for me every day to go outside to water it and check on it and talk to it right sure yeah absolutely and, um, well, I want to thank you because, you know, we've, we've, we've been in this series, I guess I'm calling Shining Through, where we're talking about everyday things that we do that we can make into spiritual practices. And I think what we eat, what we put on our skin, uh, you know, all of that is, can be spiritual practices. I think you were talking about that here in terms of. That. So I want to thank you both for being here today. I've enjoyed this conversation, and I, uh, I'm excited about uh, ways that we can be better stewards, not only here at our church, but also in our homes. And uh, uh, It's an exciting time here at the church, and I can't wait to see where this, this team takes us in terms of the Green Chalice team. I know your meeting is it February 16th, I Thank believe, you. is your next meeting. So uh, I look forward for more information coming out of that meeting. And the great opportunities and the great ministry that this team will provide. And they'll hear, everybody will hear more. You will hear it in newsletters, on Facebook and everything, giving you ideas. And also, if they have ideas, we would love to hear. All right, get your ideas to them. Right. <laughs> so, well, thanks again, ladies. Uh, Leah and Brenda, thank you both for being here today. Thank you. I want to thank once again both Leah and Brenda for, for sitting down with me this week to talk about uh, the Green Chalice uh, initiative here at the church. I know they are very excited about it and what it might uh, bring for us as a congregation. So I hope you've enjoyed that interview today. If, if you will now, though, I want to turn our attention. Will you pray with me? Let's go to God in prayer. Gracious God, today we give you thanks for the creation that you have built for, for our care and for us to care for. Holy God, what a gift we often do not see. What a gift that we do not take time to appreciate sometimes. And it has become a cliche to, to say that we stop and smell the roses, but within that is wisdom that we need each day. So help us, God to appreciate your gift of, of nature and to treat it with the reverence that we would for any of your gracious gifts. It is the instrument that you've crafted to feed us and to clothe us, to house us. And this gift demands our care in return so that we may adequately fulfill your commandment to love our neighbor near and far. 
So may we live up to this holy calling given to us, God. This holy calling given to us at the very beginning of your creative act. Gracious God, we, we continue to pray for all who are struggling during this time. We pray for our church and our community, our world. And we ask that we might find ways to be the body of Christ in responding to needs as we are able. We pray all these things, O oh God. In the name of the Lord over all creation, the one who loves us as we are, Jesus Christ. Who taught us to pray. When he said, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. And give us this day our daily bread and forgive us of our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen.
teaches us that they were to, to leave a portion in the fields so that those that would come behind them, that others that would come after them could eat and be fed. We come to this table week after week following a long line of others who have come before us. And like them, each of us comes receiving a portion that's been left behind for us by Jesus who on that night gave us these gifts of bread and cup as reminders of his love and his grace. So we come to this table today to receive out of the abundance of God's love that he has. We come to receive our portion. So let us come now to eat, to be fed, and to remember. Let us pray. Father God, your love for us is revealed in many ways. Your protection keeps us safe. Your generosity teaches us to share with all mankind. As we receive this communion meal, your loving kindness is revealed in Jesus Christ, our Savior. Help us to see your glory revealed to us and make it visible in all we do. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. As we remember that night in which Jesus took a loaf of bread and he blessed it and he gave it to the disciples saying, Take and eat. This is my body which is broken and given to you. And then likewise he took the cup and he blessed it and he poured it out saying, This is the cup of the new covenant which is poured out for many for the forgiveness of sins. Take and drink. For as often as we eat this bread and we drink this cup, we proclaim his love and his death until he comes again. Thank you again for, for joining us this week. I hope you have found today's service meaningful and that you leave here today just a little bit more refreshed and ready to start your week. And, and if you haven't done so already, I want to invite you to find that description link and click on that, that link for the connection card and fill that card out for us so that we can stay connected uh, more so during this time together. And now as we go into this week, may your light shine for all to see. And may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you now and always. Let's go in peace. Have a great week, everyone. Take care. Bye-bye.